Good evening and welcome to a Cook's Tour. Before we ask you to don your aprons and join Marianne for this very special Provençal cook-along, we're going to hop over to the south of France, to the Côte de Provence Sainte Victoire, to meet Guillaume Philippe, local winemaker. Guillaume and his partner Virginie have been instrumental in the success story that is the blushing Provençal style of rosé. And their flagship, MIP Classic Rosé, is a refreshing, easy to drink, guaranteed crowd pleaser. Guillaume, c'est parti. Hey guys, my name is Guillaume Philippe, owner and winemaker of the wine estate in Provence, Domaine des Diables. With my wife Virginie, we created Domaine des Diables in 2007 at the foot of the Saint Victor Mountain. The soil here offers a perfect balance between clay, silt and sand and guarantees finesse for the wine. In the constant interest of the respect for the environment and the consumer, all our plots are cultivated in a sustainable, eco-friendly way bordering on organic farming. Inspired by the rich and exceptional terroir of the saint victoire Mountain, we have created a new concept, MIP, for Made in Provence. It's a range of six fine wines with a flashy packaging, aromatic rosé elegant white and powerful fruity red wines. We are in a cellar. Each challenge is vinified separately to adapt the best winemaking technique. The harvest is done at night because the cooler is harvest, the less the color of the berries is released into the juice. Upon the arrival at the cellar, the grapes are protected from oxidation with carbonic ice and are immediately pressed under the oxygen excluding conditions. This allows us to significantly reduce the inputs of sulfate. To maintain the aromatic potential of the future wines, the fermentation begins at low temperatures. So, the most popular of the MIP wine range is the MIP Classic Rosé. It's made from the blend of 60% Senso, 20% Syrah, and 20% Grenache. To see more in details, I would like to taste it with you now. You have a very light rose petal colored robe with a pleasant and powerful bouquet with a note of uh, white flowers and a, and a small yellow fruit. This is a wine with a with a very delicate mouthfeel um, with a freshness. It is an uh, easy to drink and guaranteed a crown pleasure wine. I will recommend to try it at uh, 8 to 11 degrees as an aperitif drink or uh, as an uh, accompaniment to light meals, for example, Mediterranean style food, as a cherry tomato, tartatin, or the famous uh, onion tart called uh, la pisaladia. You can also taste it uh, simply with various uh, grilled Mediterranean food. Prost. Hey guys, follow us in uh, Instagram and uh, enjoy your meal.
Good evening and a warm welcome to a cooked tour with Rocket. Good evening and a warm welcome to a cook's tour and to our next destination, Soiree en Provence. My name is Charlie Grant-Peterkin and I am delighted to be joined this evening by the brilliant Marianne Lam. <laughs> Marianne grew up in Leicestershire, learning at the feet of her father, the village butcher. She continued into restaurants, reaching Michelin level at Grave Thai Manor. Marianne then became a private chef with the Sainsbury, Soros and Bamford families and in 2013 opened her own restaurant, Restaurant Marianne in Notting Hill. Marianne has appeared as a finalist on MasterChef Professionals, The Great British Menu and Saturday Kitchen Live and has published her very own book, Kitchen Knife Skills. Marianne has felt a connection to Provence since her childhood and more recently became executive chef at George Lucas's estate, Chateau Marguis. Well, Marianne, <laughs> well, welcome to A Cook's Tour. It's wonderful that you're here. Oh, it's such a pleasure to be here. It's so great to see you. Um, yeah, it's a joy to be cooking with Rocket. Um, known you guys for a long time, so it's a real pleasure to be here. And we I, have history, don't we? <laughs> no, we do. I think it was 20 years ago yeah. when you were just starting up. Uh, so and it's fantastic to see everything I loved about Rocket is still everywhere. The quality of ingredients, the style in which you do everything. So it's it's a real joy to collaborate with you. Oh, well, that's very kind of you to say, and I'm blushing like the rosé right now. <laughs> um, but come on, you're taking us a soiree in Provence. I why, know. Why Provence? Oh, well, I mean, just just when you land, if you fly into Nice and the glittering ocean, the smell of the vines, the pines, the jasmine, the lavender, uh, the ingredients, the the beauty of the of the fish and the shellfish and tomatoes, basil. I mean, the list is endless. Yeah. So, and yes, as you said, a connection from my childhood, and and it's it's just such a pleasure to be there. It is a wonderful, wonderful part of the world. And uh, well, I have my 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 map here, and gosh, here it is. Look, let me borrow your. Okay. I, I I spotted this. I usually grab one of Ryan's knives, but I can't resist this pink for Provence um, <laughs> spatula. And there is Provence just lurking in there. And um, isn't it wonderful? Next to Italy, you've got the Outmarin team, the, the, the Mediterranean, of course, then you're making your way across to sort of, you know, the, the Luberon Valley. And it's just, um, well, it's one of those places in Europe. It's, 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 it's the crowning joy, isn't it? Indeed. I mean, we were lucky enough to be in Antibes last summer and going to the Marche Provençal every day. It's just this hub of the Mediterranean and just the, the endless possibilities of incredible cuisine there yeah. so so yeah I'm delighted to be here okay so we're off to Provence and, and what are you hoping that our intrepid cooks at home are going to take away from this experience okay so we're going straight into the deep end I mean we're kicking off with a lovely little tapenade parmier that we've done for you already that hopefully you can have a nibble on while sipping a delicious glass of chilled rosé wine uh, and then the starter is as I said straight into the deep end we're doing a courgette souffle uh, a real favorite uh, my mother used to cook it for my sister and I for our birthdays um, I've kind of elevated the status a little bit um, and we're serving it with the bouillabaisse sauce, so a classic uh, Mediterranean fish stew. Um, so mm. that's going to be poured in at the last minute. We've even, you should have your ramekins at the ready in your box, so we've even got the sauce those for you. So nice, good, decent sized portions. Uh, for main course, we've got a juicy rump of lamb, uh, Launceston lamb, um, rump, fantastic cut, nice and juicy. Uh, um, and then we're serving it with some lovely fine green beans, oh. um, a 
jus antiboise. So it's only recently that I realized that antiboise meant an antique. <laughs> um, so, uh, and I've seen this kind of the, the combination of the ingredients. So the pine nuts, the confit tomato, the, and, and the confit of onion and the basil. I've seen it in olive oil served with fish. So it's a real versatile mix that goes through this lamb jus. Mm. Um, and then alongside, we've got some confit potatoes, so goose fat and garlic, and the potatoes. So we've done those for you as well. So we, the skill there is the lamb cooking. And then to finish, uh, we're finishing off with a tartre pisienne. Uh, rumoured, rumoured to be Bridget Bardot's favourite dessert, but it doesn't look like she ate that many of them. <laughs> Um, so uh, brioche, lovely buttery brioche that we again we've made for you and we're going to cut that open. We've got an orange flour water pastry cream um, and it's not authentic to have strawberries in it but they're in season and they are amazing the oak mm. church strawberries so we're putting those there and, and a fantastic dessert because that just sits in the fridge and you can just pull it out last minute so as chefs we love those desserts. Gosh it's sounding good isn't it? Well. Um, we should get cracking, I think, because there's going to be a fair bit to do. And actually, um, with this evening's cook-along, we're going to, um, it's going to be in two parts, if you like. Um, Marianne is going to, for the first sort of um, half an hour, 40 minutes, going to talk you through all the assembling and the prep and the creating of the souffle and the, the, the cooking of the lamb. And then for the last 10 minutes, we're going to ask you just to down tools as, um, well, we put the queen of souffles to the test. And um, <laughs> as she cooks the souffle uh, live, and you guys can watch how that's done, and she'll plate the lamb as well. So we will remind you of that um, when we get to it. But before that, some housekeeping, of course. Put your ovens on, 170, okay? Ovens on to 170. Um, as ever, you can cook now, you can cook later, and bonsoir, all those who are cooking on Friday. Great to have you here. Um, the live chat, Michel, aka Michael, is there with his pastis in hand and is available to take your questions, so please fire away to him. There's the um, space bar if you want a live pause, pause any moment and you can just press space again and then you'll release yourself. Uh, the booklet, it has the instructions of the cook along, so refer to that if you need. I'm almost there. Social handles, Cook with Rocket, A Cook Store. Please post your photographs of your incredible creations and Marianne this week will be judging and um, the lucky winner will have a free box to our last destination of the series um, before we take a summer break which is taste of japan so that will be in two weeks time so get posting let us see your fabulous creations and uh, marianne will judge that um, in the coming days okay brilliant um, i think that's it i think we are ready to get cooking so shall we start with um souffle yes let's start um, okay, so your souffle, you should have the fantastic ramekins, which I have over here, sorry. Um, so, uh, we have a lovely little uh, piece of butter. So I've got a small pan over here and we're just going to melt it very lightly. Oops, okay. I can't open that. Oops, one second. Um, so with soufflés, there's a few things you really need to um, adhere to uh, to make sure that they will do as they're told, if you will. Okay. Um, so this soufflé is a courgette soufflé, so it, it's, cheap, it's got gruyere in it and steamed courgette. So we've made what's called the panard, we've made that for you. Um, so uh, this isn't going to be, the sweet soufflés tend to have a really big rise mm. because of the amount of sugar that goes into the egg whites and that really stabilizes them. So because obviously we don't, in a savory souffle, we don't put sugar in, this rise isn't as heavy, isn't as high, sorry, um, and the courgette kind of makes it a little bit lower, but it is delicious I and see, lovely. Um, so if you follow these, these um, key points... Then um, you can't fail. Well, yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so the first thing to do is, everyone, is, is pop your little knob of butter into a pan and yeah. you are just sort of melting that over a yes. medium-ish heat, are you? Yes. Okay, so with the ramekin, so it's very important. Hopefully you've got a pastry brush. If you haven't, yeah, could you, you, use? you could use a bit of kitchen towel. Your finger? <laughs> Perhaps not. Okay, maybe, kitchen towel. Maybe. I didn't say that. You said that. Um, okay. Um, so I've got the button. It's very important to don't. Worry. I mean, you can do the bottom, but you don't really have to worry about that. So if you take the pastry brush and make sure the strokes are upward okay. strokes, and then there's a little lip here. Don't don't miss that out because we. That's the last thing we want is the souffle kind of caught in that lip. Um, 
um, if you will. So not too much butter. We've only given you a little bit anyway, so not too much. So, so a light sort of gloss, a light covering of the butter. Yeah, exactly. A little exactly. bit melted. And just kind of rotate it in your hands. Um, okay, so that's the first one. So in, in the restaurant, we would normally do them two to three times. Um, and it really depends on the souffle mix as to how many times you have to do them. Mm. Um, so but pretty essential to cover all the surface area. And then this is going to yeah. go in the fridge yeah. to chill for just five minutes, minutes just okay. so the butter can harden. Okay. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing again and then put the breadcrumbs in that we've ah. obviously. So effectively, we've got sort of three stages, haven't we? We've got the first stage, which yeah. is just sort of um, lining the ramekins with the butter, which I hope you're all doing at home now. Yeah. We're also going to pop in the souffle, but the panade. The panade. The yeah. panade is going in some um, in some warm water. So with that just needs to be uh, kind of room temperature. And w when we when it comes to mixing the whites in, we want to make sure that it's kind of Greek yogurt consistency okay. so so it's loose enough for the egg whites to be folded through it so I'm just I'm just warming that through very briefly and I'm just keeping it in in its pouch indeed veeding, indeed like. um, and those, those in the fridge those we're gonna pop in the fridge Thank you. okay so that's sort of um, that's part one okay um, and then part two you'll be Bread crumbing. We'll right, be right? coming back to that yeah okay Brilliant. but now we're gonna switch straight to the tart that's right okay. Okay. This delicious tart. <laughs> wow. So the tart trapezian. We've got this lovely buttery brioche. Uh, such a lovely golden brown colour. Mm. Um, so in your in your box, uh, there's some piping bags. Um, we've got the orange flower water custard. Uh, we've got the orange flower water glaze. So orange flower water is a real. It's a. It's quite. The, it, you do see it quite often in the south of France on mm. other products. So, you know the classic Provençal bread, the fougasse, which yes. is generally a olive, you know, black olives generally, or bacon lardons. Um, so they do sometimes at celebratory times do a orange uh, kind of zesty fougasse, so which orange flower water goes on as well. Mm. And the strawberries aren't authentic, but they're so good and and they're amazing with the orange. What flower would be water. sort of the authentic? Well, no, nothing. It's just nothing the pastry cream. But we just wanted to give more. we just wanted to give everyone a little bit more, you know. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm going to take that. Um, going to take that, and that's just going to go into the oven at okay. 170 for three minutes, just to refresh it. So just a few minutes to refresh. And that's a real sort of chefy trick, isn't it, with all bread? Don't you sort of yeah. refresh? And yeah, yeah, just yeah. Bring it back to life, a little um, bit of warmth. No, exactly. Uh, so that's just going to do a little bit of warmth. Meanwhile, I'm going to, I mean, you don't have to pipe the pastry cream in, but I just think it is, it just looks better. Yeah, good. Um, so I'm just going to take the piping bag. So everyone at home, grab your pi piping bags. Um, I've got this magnificent jug. <laughs> okay, so what did you do there? You sort of... I've just folded, folded it back it on itself. Back on itself, around your hand. And, that and then you're going to pop it over that jug. And that means that kind of, hopefully you don't get any custard. It's just a hygienic way of, of, of doing it. Oh, good. Yeah. Yummy. That's so, good. Oh, it's so good. So that is egg yolks. There's a little bit of gelatin, a little bit of sugar. Yeah. Um, there's orange flour water. And there's actually my secret ingredient is cream cheese, just for a bit of umami yumminess. <laughs> that sounds okay. exceptionally good. That Let me take that away for you. Um, can I have that spatula back? Actually? You need that spatula back? Yes, please. Um, okay, so we, do, we want um, as much mm. of that cream in as possible. So another good tip for these piping bags, mm. you just pop that, um, I'll put that back. Uh, if you just put that and take a knife, the blunt side of the knife, and just, yeah, most just put that there. Oh, I see it. So just switch it down. And then you can also tie it up. And these, I always wash them out and recycle them. And they're so handy, these piping bags. And yeah, I was going to say if you haven't got one, but you will have because we're supplying them. <laughs> yeah. I'm on set, so we can't do this. But if I was at home, I'd be popping that in my mouth right now. <laughs> I, I haphazardly managed to catch them on my fingers. It's absolutely <laughs> delicious. Excellent. Excellent. Um, Okay. Great, so we've had, yeah, we've had a, a, a sort of two, three minutes of brioche refreshing and you're giving it a little spin. Actually, that's fine. That's you're happy with that? It's such a beautiful brioche. Oh, yeah, it has been, has been made well by Ryan and the team at Rocket HQ, hasn't it? Yes, indeed. Yeah. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do next, so the best knife for this job is a serrated knife. Okay. So generally they're very good for crusty exteriors and soft 
in it. So a, a serrated knife is great. So a bread knife is fine. So we want to do this as neatly as we possibly Ooh, can. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so I'm doing it kind of just below the cr where the crust starts. Okay, so just below the crust. And, and hopefully... A nice flat surface. And I can see you're sort of gliding the knife with sort of relative sort of even, even pressure. Yes, exactly, exactly. Mm. Okay, so, oh, oh, such a nice brio. Happy days. Um, right, so, that's just, isn't that beautiful? Mm. So we've got a little bit of white alcohol in here, we've got orange flower water, we've got a, and a sugar syrup. Oh, so that's going to drizzle it on top and it's going to act yeah. like a sponge. Oh, yes, exactly. So that, this also helps refresh it as well. Um, and how and do you, you know how much to put on. in? Well, <laughs> just keep on going until it let's no just more. keep on going. Yep, yeah, yeah. yeah. And if you have any leftovers, you just sort of uh, maybe I'm pop it in, have a, with a gin and tonic. I, was say, maybe. Sort of, I like the way your mind is thinking. I think you maybe <laughs> sort of a gimlet or something on those lines. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's for you, Len. Okay, well, I'll put this into um, Gimlet Corner. Okay. Um, and then we've got these lovely oak church strawberries. Oops. There we go. The aroma is amazing, and that is really enhanced. Mm. The aroma is really enhanced by the orange flower water. They sit that's so happily together. Fly. They are so nicely packaged. Um, okay, so I'm just going to literally okay. take the top off as close as, as I can to the yep. greenery. Do you not worry about sort of the, I don't know what it's called, the stalk going? I, th I think the stalk's been bred out of them. You know, when you're a child, you used to be able to kind of pull them out. But mm. depending on the variety, I, I, um, I, don't, I don't worry about that at all. I just want as much strawberry in there as possible. So it's really up to you. You could slice them over. I think I'm going to just half them okay. and put them around the edge. Ah. I guess you could do this. You could do this with raspberries or. Oh raspberries. yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, and um, and then we're going to pipe in, uh, we're going to pipe in the pastry cream. So, uh, lovely old chef Ryan, my old friend chef Ryan, uh, showed me a very good trick. Uh, you know, there's a gâteau saint on en noir, which I can never pronounce very well, and there's a special nozzle that I've got at home. But if you haven't got one of those, you can take your knife and you can kind of cut it. Um, there, so slight you angle, see, yeah, slight so it's a slight it. angle, ah, and then very crafty. Then you can just pipe in. Um, That's genius. Quite nicely, like that. So as even as you at can. Look that. Oh, and that is a, heavenly. A little bit less. I might use a little bit more. Okay. Also, oh, so um, I'm going to just uh, start by placing the strawberries around. It's quite nice to have a little mm. bit poking out at the side, so that because. Yeah, so it just looks a little bit prettier, I'd say. Gosh, how could you cheat this at home? If you if you if you can't lay your hands, or you you know you haven't got time to start making brioche. I mean, heavens, um, what, what what could you do? Um, I'm just trying to think. I mean, I love making brioche. So I think if you've got a freestanding mixer with which yeah. to make brioche, and if you're locked down for a few days, then it's <laughs> okay. fine. Um, I'm just trying to think. It is all the about the bread, key, though. Yeah, yeah, and okay. you can Fair you could always buy a really nice brioche from um, uh, as. Uh, a yeah, baker. Uh, yeah, somewhere. <laughs> and, then, and then you could do this yourself. So you, yeah. I can see what you've done there, and then you've just layered it, the strawberries on top, and then Indeed. you're going to put it back on its wee bonnet. There we go. Actually, yeah. you know what, because I've shuffle. got... <laughs> ah, okay, yeah. Max out on the cream, so you're sort of polyfilling the gaps. Yes, that's it. That's it. Um, and then we're going to let that set. In the, it's quite warm in here, so it starts to come okay. around. So we'll get that into, into the fridge, into the fridge, into the fridge. Should I put Should pop pop it on there? there? Yeah, why not? And we'll whisk that away. There we go. So everyone at home, if you're up to speed, you should be here or hereabouts, then pop your tart into the fridge. Excellent. Okay. Um. Um, and now, I see a note on the board saying that we need to put the oven up. Ah, well uh, done. Oven Thank up you. to 2.30. That's it, ready for the lamb. Ready for the lamb. Excellent. So we're going we're gonna to return to souffle part two. Um, but um, put your oven up to um, 2.30. Okay. And um, by the time we've done souffle part two, uh, we'll be good to move on to the lamb dish. Okay. Um, so could I have those ramekins that were in the fridge? Yeah, here you go. They've come back. Okay. Excellent. Um, 
so uh, as it's so warm in here the butter actually does melt quite quickly um, so while, while that's kind of coming back up to room te temperature we'll just get the breadcrumbs that, that are in mm. the box um, and then the uh, butter again. So you're doing another layer of the butter, right? Another so layer. The same warmed it's butter. Exactly the same thing. Yeah. Um, so whilst you're rotating the ramekin in your hand, I do the kind of the lion's share of the ramekin and then let's go back and do that little tip Yeah. again. Do you ever get nervous doing soufflés? Every, you know what? Every time. Every it time. It gets easy, does it? No, but, it, and it, but I think that's the, what I love about it. It's the anticipation and the kind of risk oh. and the fact that there's so many things can go wrong. Have you ever, have you ever um, made cooked a souffle when you have an oven camera? Spy no, no, this is... Uh, so this is, we, is, this, is this new heights, new levels, oh, new boundaries? It's wonderful, what a treat. Souffle creation for, what? for Marianne Lum. I need, one, I need one for the oven yeah. at home, definitely. OK, well, you need to get uh, Tom to install one. <laughs> yeah. So hold on, what's going on there? So you put in a, 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 tea, uh, sorry, a dessert spoon or two of That's crumb. it, yeah. yeah. So two spoons of crumb, yeah. and I'm going to, if you can, so I'm going to, I'm putting it on one side, and whilst... I'm ensuring that it goes all the way across. I'm also tipping it into the next it, one. Yeah, okay, ah, crafty. Okay, so, and I'm gonna tip out the excess. Um, Great. Okay. And What's in the crumb? So that is literally just toasted, malted bread. So okay. a nice little bit of, of flavor. So you can uh, use the leftovers as these as, as I don't yeah. know, make a schnitzel or something, it'd be quite nice. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so okay. leftovers, get schnitzeling. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so once they're crumbed... Yes, so um, back into the fridge back again. Into the fridge. Yep. Okay. Okay, back into the fridge, folks. Okay. Oops. Um, and and may I, those will finish uh, with. Yep. Okay. Very good. Okay, so souffle part two complete. Yep. And now we're on with the lamb. We're on to the lamb. Okay. okay. So the plan now, everyone at home, is that we're going to get the lamb dish ready. So um, we're going to start by doing a bit of lamb searing um, and we're going to pop that into the oven. And then whilst it's in the oven cooking, which I think is for sort of 12 minutes or so, yes. there's going to be a bit of sort of prep for um, the potato and the, the, and, and the lovely sauce that's going to go with it. So lovely. what ingredients does everyone at home need to have um, sort of on hand? It looks like um, quite a few. Yeah, yeah, there's quite a lot going on. Okay, so you've got uh, here, we've got the jus, we've got the confit of onion and the olives mm -hmm. in there. Um, we've got the pine nuts. Yes. And then also we've got the basil and some tomatoes that's going to go through the jus. Yeah. And then of course we've got our lovely rump of lamb here that we've been marinating in rosemary and garlic and black pepper. Mm. And then the confit, the goose fat and garlic confit potatoes. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, so first thing I'm going to, oh, Sorry, and the lovely green beans. Oh, don't forget the haricot vert. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. This is the haricot vert is the ingredient that I see in the supermarket and always wish it was in season, and the window is now, so I'm delighted. We're in. <laughs> okay. Very good. So make sure your pan's nice and hot. Okay, so um, frying pan, large-ish, as you can see on the, on the, large on the camera. Large-ish. I mean, this is probably larger than what we need, but I want to get these potatoes in because I want to get them okay. a really nice golden crust okay, at the same good. time. Yum. Oh, so oven really hot, uh, pan really hot. No fat in the pan. Not yet. Not yet. Not okay. yet. Okay, so... This lamb looks sensational. So mm. this is uh, from H.G. Walter. Uh, mm. It's from Devon. Mm. And this is the rump. It is. So um, rump's a nice halfway house. Obviously, it's not as expensive as the rack, mm. um, but it's got more character. Uh, and, and you don't see it that much. You do see it occasionally. But obviously, if you see a leg, you can just tell the, uh, the butcher, can you just take off a little bit for me there? So I, I love it. It's a good halfway house. Um, it's really easy to cook. We've got an incredibly hot oven. But when you seal it at that heat, it means that you don't get like a grey exterior around the okay. edge. So that's, that's the reason why it's such a hot oven. And okay. it does have a little bit more fat on it, doesn't it? It does. And running yeah. through it too, so which I guess helps in the cooking process. Indeed, and fat is flavour. I was just looking, oh there it is. There's ah, there you go. Okay, so we're going to salt. Uh, the lamb. So you're salting it all over yeah. every side? all over. And I'm not going to pepper it because there's plenty of pepper in here okay. already. Okay. Um, okay, that pan is really hot. And actually, because it's in a little bit of olive oil, I don't think we need any oil in there. But okay. I'm just going to see 
Ooh. Yeah, good flavour. I'm going to add a good. little bit just to get it going. A little bit of olive oil, OK. Uh, and is the plan to get colour on all sides? Um, ideally, or yeah. Are you rendering gonna, the fat to begin? I'm going to render the fat to begin. That's going to be a really hot pan. Hang on. Don't worry about smoke <laughs> in the studio. The guys here at Event Concept love smoke in the studio. Okay? The more smoke, the better. You can see what Ryan's been up to. Have you got a fire alarm? I'm very good at setting those off. <laughs> oh, crikey. Um. I've had a few of those in my event years. <laughs> OK, so, yes, very hot pan. Very hot pan. Um, OK, so skin, uh, fat side down. And now fat side down. Lifted. Yeah, and I'm just going to get a nice searing on all sides. Okay. Um, and as I say, I mean, it is. Oh, look at that! It's beautiful lamb. You can see that lovely colouring there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, have your windows open and the fire alarms at the ready, <laughs> but to fan the fire alarm. Um, okay, and that's off. And lamb is, I mean, in Provence, it's 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 seen everywhere, isn't it? I mean, it is. Yeah. Um, there's a cisteron, cisteron lamb. Mm. Um, so they, there's lots of beautiful recipes with lamb shoulders stuffed with herbs and Lovely. Um, no, absolutely. Lots of rosemary stunning. and anchovies. Oh yes. Prominently, don't they? Yes, indeed, indeed. Yeah. Oh. Just those lovely, those lovely flavours, and I love the fact in Provence you get so much influence from Italy and Spain as well. It all feeds in. Yes. Okay, so I'm really happy with how that's looking. Okay. Um, so a bit of, bit of colour on all sides. Bit of colour on all sides, and then got the potato. And you're going to salt those a little bit. A little I bit of salt. I put some salt on there, and, and they're the going to go. Yeah. Okay. So it is a hot oven. I'm going to, let me just put a little bit more. A little there. bit of olive oil on top of the potatoes. Get that going. Yeah. Smells amazing. Right. It does. And then oh. actually. And throw in a bit of garlic for good measure. And also, let's just yeah, take those not? lovely, lovely flavours. Rosemary. Okay. Good. Thank you. There we go. Okay, and in we go. So, 12, so in the oven. 12 minutes. 12 minutes. Okay, 12 minutes on the clock. Uh, let me just set. And that's for sort of medium rare. Yes. Um, and so with this one, it's very important to rest it obviously afterwards. Um, so if you wanted um, well done, if you want, I think medium rare is probably the optimal way yeah. to cook it. If you wanted it more well done, obviously just a, a few more minutes. Yeah. And then when you, uh, the longer you rest it, it will carry on kind of cooking itself as well. So yeah. um, just as you like it at home, really. Um, okay, good. Okay, good. so whilst that's in, we are going to just assemble the jus. Okay. Uh, so I've got a, a pan here. Um, so I'm going to empty out this lovely looking pot that says confit onion and olive jus in there. Ooh. So I, I once had an aunt, Auntie Boise dressing on a tuna steak, I remember, just sitting by, uh, by the Mediterranean Sea. Um, and it was, it was a really, it's one of those memorable meals. And that's the thing about Provence, the, so, the food you have there is memorable. That's it. Mostly. Well, um, you, you, were, you, were, you were telling me before we came um, on air that um, your fondest memories are actually of your childhood when you went on camping holidays. I know. You know? And that's obviously <laughs> the best way, isn't it? Because then you really are with nature indeed and eating nature no indeed and then i was lucky enough to cook there last summer um, and we were sitting under the pines having a glass of wine after a hard day's work and i was just catapulted yeah. back to those those times in the south of france so oh, gosh such heavenly. a special place okay i'm gonna um so Sorry. beans um it's, it's you've got to remember on this that we, we've got to sort of talk about we get so easily carried away talking about wonderful provence and memories <laughs> and how much we would love to be there very soon um, and we've got to remember that we need to give instructions to those at home so beans have been taken out of that little bundle and you're yes. going to you're going to top them sure so i love the little curly end there yeah, me so too. and i'm going to leave that on and then we want as much kind of length as possible so we'll just take those off okay. i've got a pan of water ready to cook those um so they're ready to blanch and obviously what three minutes if that i think yeah. So for the jus, we're going to put the pi lovely toasted pine nuts in pine there. Pine nuts into the jus. Um, and then um, I'll give you my little pots. Yeah. These pot, the, all the pots I get, I use them all the time. They can be reused, <laughs> recycled. <laughs> They're yeah. so useful. Yeah. Um, OK, and then the cherry tomatoes. Um, I'm just going to quarter those. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could concast these tomatoes, but we're just leaving it a little Gosh, bit that more. That sounds terribly chefy. At home, yeah. We're a bit yeah. more rustico. We are. We're sort of um, in the Luberon Valley. We're not sort of <laughs> sitting in Monaco. Exactly. <laughs> mm. 
So I'm just quartering those through there. Yeah. Um, and then let's just check the lamb. Again, lamb you're nice happy with. Good, good, good. Okay. Um, and the souffle base, I noticed you've oh. warmed it and taken yeah. it off. Yes. You happy? So that is, that's room temperature. I'm just, oh, yes, please. Yeah. yeah. So, so yes, that is, yeah, through. just warmed it through room temperature. So it shouldn't be piping hot. If it's got too hot, Take it off and just let it cool down for a bit. Indeed, indeed. Okay. Oh, that beautiful smell. I'm coming to that souffle mix in a moment. Um, mm. that basil's smelling good. It's funny, isn't it? But it's just the, 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 the flavors oh, and the smells, yeah. the aromas um, of these types of ingredients, they do transport you. They do indeed. Um, Charlie, I'm gonna leave the, I'm gonna chop the basil now. Yeah. So as you would do chiffonade of basil, I'm gonna pile them all, in fact I'll do all of it, why not? Yeah. And I'm gonna put that in right at the last minute to retain its green okay. um, nature. Okay, I so think. everyone at home, it's beans prepped, pushed to one side, and we're gonna um, chiffonade, is that right? Sh so chiffonade, chiffonade. Um, chef so Watching chef those fingers, you sort of <laughs> move that out Four little way. fingers. There we go. Okay, is there a little tub I could just put this in? Yeah, I can, I mean, I mean, take your pick. I mean, there's, there's anything little. There's certainly some, some, some big things up here. Um, or perhaps not, but we can get something. Yeah. Lovely. Why you pop them oh, thank you now? so much. Lovely. There we go. Good. Okay, so we're in a good place. Lamb is in the oven. You're probably That's six minutes on the clock, I think, done. You've got yep. the sauce prepared. Yep. Um, and we're getting close to that stage where we're looking at souffle part three. Mm. What do you think about that? Indeed, good. We're, we're, we're in a good place. We're in good shape, I'd in say. Good shape. So with the jus, I've, I've put everything in here apart from the basil. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just going to warm that through. It's got a little bit of balsamic in there that we've put in there as well. So, yes. Oh, isn't that, that is heaven? Delicious, heavenly. Um, so the confit of onion that's in there, so that's just diced onion that's been cooked for hours very, very gently. Okay. And that's just such a lovely flavour. Yeah. Um, okay. Wow, right. wow, so, wow. So it sounds like the moment that you're keeping quite busy this year, lots of projects on the go, but um, I mean, George Lucas, the creator of Star Wars, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> and executive <laughs> chef um, at Chateau Marguis. I mean, oh. that's... That's exciting, no? It was. It was such a dream. Um, it was. We, so we went out in January 2019, right just before COVID started. Yes. So that kind of stopped all of our plans. But being, you know, obviously it's such a first-class operation. The team, the location. You can stand in the vineyards and not see a light. I mean, it's the most quite lovely pocket of Provence, ne near Brad and Angelina's vineyard. <laughs> Love it. Just um, next door. It's. Um, it's. It's real. It's the stuff of dreams so and and to cook produce there you can see how much i love yeah. the produce so a real dream country and the kitchen's like a formula one car you know is it yeah wow. yeah really really fun to drive yeah um let's sort just have a, a look like sort of the, the inside of the millennium falcon <laughs> yeah. and you were telling me that there's a sky wall uh, sorry skywalker Rosé or? Oh yeah, so the, I think the whole estate is called, sorry, I know the whole estate is called Skywalker, so uh, that's the name of the uh, okay. business, so no, it, it's phenomenal. Oh, I'm just going to check the okay. lamb, just let's have a look. Oh, and I... Do you want to bring it out and pop yeah, it up Yeah, halfway here. through. Pop it on there and we'll have um, a look down. So halfway through the lamb cooking. You see that's really hot, which is good. And then the and potatoes, flip those. let's flip Ooh. them over, they're looking nice and good golden. Good colour on those. Nice Goose fat. Colour. Mm. Let's have a look. Might just turn. Okay, so let's turn the lamb over halfway through. Okay. Be really careful about your hot pan and burning yourself. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So okay. Mistake often made. And um, goose fat, goose mm. fat potatoes. Mm. Um, goose fat. Why is goose fat so good at you know crisping potatoes? Um, what is the secret? Do you know? I think. Um, we we have in in Leicestershire where we live. We've got one of the best. Uh, farmers of geese in the country, Bottrell, yeah. and uh, they're just such happy animals. They're completely free range, and when, when we, we always have a goose at Christmas, and we get six pints of goose from like one goose, and 
I, I don't know what it is, but the flavour is just exemplary. And particularly in the south of France, so goose fat and garlic is a real, yes. um, it's a real speciality that. around yeah. there. And especially close to the Spanish border, they love it around there as well. Mm. Um, so I think it's a, there's a little bit of butter in those potatoes as well. So that really helps crisp it up. Just but yeah, goose fat and potatoes, I never tire of, my word. OK, so souffle, okay. part three, if okay. you're ready. Yeah, Should I'm ready. Should we do that? Let's do it. Because I think we're going to get a bit of a whisk on, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, um, I'm, I'm here to help. Okay, okay. So, you know, by all means, um, okay. Ryan usually gets me to do the hard stuff. Oh, yes, please. OK. Can you uh, put as much as you can? OK, so the souffle there. base, as much as we can of the souffle base. Yeah. Um, I've learned not to try and open these with my hands. I'm just going to well go done. straight in with the scissors. No, well done. OK, so I've got the egg whites. I absolutely hate whisking egg whites by hand but and I normally do them in an electric mixer so I've actually bought my own favorite bowl that I've had for 20 <laughs> okay. years and my trusty whisk <laughs> so make sure you don't use too big a bowl because you'll really be chasing the whites around I love that most chefs arrive in the cook's tour kitchen everyone brings their own toys so they, you know they bring their own knives usually but the queen of souffle comes armed with a <laughs> with a whisk and her favorite bowl <laughs> okay you're obviously feeling the pressure <laughs> <laughs> I am. Okay, so um, make sure your bowl is absolutely clean, uh, scrupulously clean. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things about souffle. So um, we can see the panade is, is of uh, Greek yogurt consistency. Yep. Uh, the egg white and everything that touches it needs to be really clean okay. um, because you know even if you so we're sending you um, pasteurized egg whites if you were to if you were separating eggs at home and you got a little touch of the yolk in the whites it really ruins okay. the whisk of the white Gosh. Um, so you do need to be mindful of that. I'm, I'm putting a little bit of this beautiful Amalfi lemon in there. Yeah, this is probably as much as a teaspoon and uh, a pinch of salt. Yes. So you do have to work harder with a savoury souffle, as I mentioned earlier, because you don't have the sugar in to stabilise. Um, oh, wow. Such lovely lemons. Um, OK. Uh, and before I start the marathon of whisking, yeah. I am going to... Uh, dice the courgette. So um, we've got our delicious bouillabaisse sauce that we've made for you, a very hotly disputed uh, recipe. Um, in Paris they put lobster in and everyone else frowns on that in Toulon, <laughs> uh, mussels and potatoes. And in Marseille, if they don't put rascas in there, it's, it's a travesty. So there's all sorts of controversy surrounding it. So obviously a bouillabaisse would have a whole pieces of fish in, but we've, we've pureed this for you. So it's, it's just really smooth to go into the seafood. Gosh. And a hopefully a really nice taste of the of the Mediterranean Sea there. Okay, so um, with, with the courgette, um, I've just taken about a third of it and I'm going to dice it. So I've just sliced it into kind of five mil slices um, and then I'm just going to uh, go that way. So just very simple knife skills. Yeah, uh, and there we go. So nice fine dice because I'm going to put a little bit of this in the bottom of the ramekins and some of this with the bouillabaisse with the sauce. Okay. Um, okay. And is that as much as you need? Yeah, yeah it is just really. a little. Okay. You know what? I, and with the rest of it, oh, you know what you could do? You could panne the rest of it with those crumbs and deep fry them for nice courgette fries. Oh, if you fancy. genius. That's such a good <laughs> idea. Um, okay, so I'll, just, I'll, I'll do this. Yeah, yeah, I'll just do that. So just very simple, nice skills. Um, good, good, good. Just check that lamb. Well, 43 lamb. seconds. 43 okay. seconds to go, team. You know what? Lamb. I'm going to take it out now because that okay. oven is really, really hot. Okay. Um, lovely. Okay, so I'm going to take it from from there. How can you tell that it's where it's where it's wants where you want it to be in terms of the cooking? Is it, by touching it, by feeling it, is it feeling? Um, yeah. So there's a there's a there's something you can do. Uh, we used to teach at least cookery schools. So uh, for rare, you have your hand relaxed. Or blue, sorry, yeah. you have your hand relaxed, and if you poke that part, that's blue. For um, rare it's there for medium rare it's there so the kind of firmer it gets it's, it's also well. it's also kind of instinct i mean you never you really know <laughs> I, hope yeah. so. I hope so but yeah there's always something to keep you on your toes 
in the kitchen. So the potatoes are looking look lovely and fabulous. golden now. So the lamb is popping it out and, 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 and both are just going to rest, I think, now, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, they're both yeah. going to rest. So rest not in a warm place, but, but as, it, as we're in June, it uh, should be reasonably warm, I hope. Yeah. Um, OK, can I hand that to yes, you? Yes, you can. Really hot. Pop that down there and okay. then I'll take it off you. There we go. Um, and at this point, too, when the lambs come out of the oven, the oven needs to be turned down a bit, doesn't yes, it? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Well reminded. So back down to 190 for your oven sort of for the souffle. Um, okay, could you pass me the ramekins, please? Yes, I certainly can. Okay. So ramekins, folks, out of the fridge. And also for the souffle, I'm going to put this tray in, in the kind of bottom third of the oven. So get your baking sheet nice and hot for the souffle. Okay. So oven down to 190, tray in the oven, okay. ramekins out of the fridge. Lamb is just chillaxing with the potatoes. Uh, Marianne is fishing out another pan. Another pan. <laughs> because in okay. that pan, she is popping um, the, the half the courgettes, half the courgettes being popped into, popped into that pan. And then I'm going to put a little more courgette as a nice, a little bit of kind of freshness at the bottom of the souffle. Love it. I guess it gives it a, that little bit of sort of texture too, doesn't it? Indeed. Yeah. Mm. Okay, that can go in there as well. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, let's begin. <laughs> the whisk is on, is that right? Yeah. Okay. You might have to talk amongst yourselves for a little bit. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so with a whisking by hand, if you've got an electric whisker, use it. Then do use it. Um, okay. Yeah, because as a, especially I've been quite domesticated during lockdown, so I'm my uh, arm muscles aren't as they were. You know when you're in a restaurant and you're making two pints of hollandaise every morning, you have a much kind of quicker thing. But anyway, this is a good size bowl. Um, and just start whisking, basically. Great. And what, what, what are we looking to achieve? Uh, so we're looking for stiff peaks, but not dry. So we want them to hold their shape. Okay. Um, so it's a, the souffle is a real symphony of, of things. So the first thing is lining the mould. The second thing is the panade. Third thing, the whites. The fourth thing is... Um, folding in and actually we're going to pipe the souffle base into the ramekin okay. um, so that and, and we do that neatly so there isn't any kind of holes in it and that also helps for a good rise okay. and then lastly it's all about the top hat um, which will kind of release it from the side so I mean as I said these aren't the real these aren't a real big souffle because it's got the courgette in it that weighs it down a little bit but I would like to come back on the cook store and do a real stonking fruit souffle. Oh yes please. <laughs> yes, please. I think uh, you know I think we've got the subject for your next um, cookery book here. The, the, the art of the souffle. <laughs> I know, and, and actually, originally, this is taken the courgette souffle as an Elizabeth David recipe from her book on French provincial cooking. Yes. And we used to do it where you steam out the courgette bottom and you pipe the souffle in. So it's, it's almost like I call a souffle gratin, where it, ah. it rises a little bit, but it's, it's not like a, a traditional souffle. So, um, no, it's a pleasure, and I hope everyone's enjoying it at home. Yeah. So we're probably about that soft peaks, obviously, now. And they'll increase in size. And yeah. but all these um, wonderful recipes are available, of course, on the Cookstore website. So do, do, do check them out, because once you've done this this evening, then I'm sure you're going to want to do it again at every dinner party through the rest of the summer. So um, check out the, the recipes on the Cookstore website, and um, you'll have everything there that you need. Where's Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> Look, let me have a go. Go on, I'm here to help. <laughs> Come on, then. Yeah? Just a few more minutes. Just a few more minutes. Am I allowed to say hello to some people at home? Yeah, go on. I want to say hello to Rob and Miranda, our great friends who have got a box this evening. Uh, and Woody and Lisa. Bon appétit. Oh, and, and my mother. Oh, of course. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Well, very nice to have you all cooking along, <laughs> as with all those at home as well. Okay. So you prepared another piping bag in the jug again? Yeah, yeah, I have. Thank you so much for doing that. That's okay. Um, I think we're sort of at um, medium soft peaks now, do you think? That's looking good. Shall I take over? Okay, so yeah. still a little bit of movement in there. Okay. 
but the, the good thing is they're looking stable. So if the, if there was something greasy in the bowl, they'd be they wouldn't be looking as kind of voluminous uh -huh. as they are now. So and what would you do then? Would you just stop and? Um, I'd start again. Start so again. clean everything. Okay. I mean, clean I, everything down. I did a I did a summer in the Hamptons once, and you're really low down there, and whisking egg whites was a nightmare because it was so humid. Um, so. Okay. Yes. You know there is quite a fun test you can do with this, okay. Charlie. Okay. Go on, pop it down there. Let's. No, let's... no, hang on. Oh. You... <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was. Oh, that was a knife edge. I thought I thought I was going to have a sort of a, 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 a egg shower. <laughs> well done. Okay, Jeez. Sorry. Oh. Don't show Ryan that. Right. Okay. So now is the critical time. Okay. So now it's critical time. But hold on a second. Let's have a look at that on okay. on, on the overhead cam. It, you, everyone at home, stick the up down over your, your chef partner's head <laughs> and if it sticks you're in business if it doesn't you're back to the beginning but you've had a good laugh so that's a stiff peak ready to go yeah get ready to go okay, okay so we're going to take our lovely pink spatula <laughs> and um, we're going to put a third in um, so a this third, way okay. we can mix it in kind of willy-nilly and actually you can use your whisk okay. we're just going to you know mix it through and the, the final the final bit of egg white the remaining two-thirds will take more care okay uh, so that can okay. go there whisk holder okay no i finished with that one oh, you finished so with it okay yeah, i'll put fine. it in my my box of tricks down there okay okay and then okay so then two-thirds yeah so in. the remaining white so um you can use a spoon like that if you want to okay. as well um but i i'm love my pink you've got a thing for the pink spatula. well <laughs> yeah. I, I tell you it can be a gift from us to you <laughs> thank you okay so i am folding in so i'm cutting Keeping the air in aren't you trying to indeed yeah. so, so we're folding. cutting folding. is it you're doing a sort of a f almost figure of eight yeah it? indeed so we don't want to overfold, and i would say that was where we want to be so i'm going to yeah. put this into the marvelous jug yeah And the, the, the panard, what, what's in that base? That's a combination of... Um, so basically it starts uh, with a, uh, like a, a, a bechamel. So, so sorry, no, we make a roux. Right. So flour, yes. butter, um, and milk. Uh, and then in this one we have steamed courgette uh, and gruyere cheese, a little bit of parmesan. Um, so the gruyere is a really nice, uh, has a good affinity with the bouillabaisse as well because generally you'd have a uh, rouille and gruyere and croutons with your fish soup, so that goes really well. Mm. Um, okay, let's move that out of the way. Chug out of the way, okay. Uh, okay, so um, I'm going to cut the nozzle of the souffle okay. and then start in kind of one corner and then we're going to pipe that all around. So we've given you two very nice size ramekins. Um, so starting at the outside and then just, you're just sort of in a circular motion. And it should be... Oh, it's the perfect pour. It, I mean, it's just enough. So if you have uh, not whisked it, if you've over folded a little bit, you wouldn't have as much mix, basically. Okay. So should be spot on. Okay, okay. thank you, yep. Charlie. You Sorry. That's all right. So yeah. what I like to do next, um, just to make sure there aren't any air holes. Uh, so I just like double tap, double tap. Um, and then I just need some, there we go. So I normally use a palette knife. So if you haven't got one, it doesn't matter. There's just one there. Or uh, a long yeah. back. Thank yeah, thank that um, I'm just gonna scrape, oh, yeah, okay. This is what a, a, a barman in the south of France does with beer, don't they? They get their knife out and they sort of they scoop off the mousse, I think it's called, when they're having a you order a demi. <laughs> wow. <before. laughs> yeah, it's a bit the same with the souffle. Okay, right. So, um, so, so if some will inevitably spill around the edge, so take a clean J cloth and just wipe around the edge okay. like that. I love this, it's a, it's, it's a science. The preparation is everything, isn't it? Okay, it is. Okay, and then to top hat, so take your thumb okay. um, and just kind of indent it very slightly all the way around. Okay, so just whizzing it around. Does it matter if you've had your nails done? Um, no, no, that actually gives it's quite a good result. Hurt. Okay. <laughs> I have kind of chef's nails, so... Okay. Brilliant. And then we're ready okay. to go. So, 
I'm going to. Has give... everyone got that at home? <laughs> okay, has everyone got that? Let's just give you a moment to, um, to finish that off, um, because the plan, isn't it now, is that we're going to cook it, and it's going to take ten minutes. Okay, um, so at home, look. Marianne is psyching up for this moment. <laughs> At home, it's probably a good idea that you now just pause um, and um, let Marianne cook the souffle and then we'll plate the lamb. And then when you're ready, having finished the cook along, then um, you guys can put your um, souffles into the oven. Okay. Yeah? Okay, good. Okay, so okay, here so we go. Let's pop those go. in. And the timer is poised for 10 minutes. So and I'm going to do five minutes. Okay. Then turn them and then another five. Okay, perfect. Okay, Charlie, so five minutes on the souffle, then we okay. turn them. Perfect. So that gives us a few moments to get Ooh. things ready. Okay, so um, I'm just going to pop it onto the board because I always tell people off for cutting on a plate, so I better not do it myself. <laughs> okay. Okay, so take your serrated knife again, and I'm going to very simply just cut it into four. Okay. Um, I know it's just for two people, but it's nice to snack on the next day, Absolutely. tomorrow as well. Um, okay, so very carefully, actually, I'm going to use my even, use sharp even knife, sharper knife, just so I don't have to move it too much. Yeah. Oh, and I can see why you want to give it some time in the fridge, because this helps the, the custard set a bit, doesn't it? Indeed, indeed. And then when you go back through, just wipe your blade again. Mm. Um, so, uh, can I move this? No. Uh, That's okay. That's okay, well done. A bit fiddly with all these bits and pieces on set. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know what? I'm going to try my carving knife this time. Um, sorry. There we go. So just use the sharpest knife you've got. Um, so not to. Okay. So there we've got. A oh, look at that. Piece. Got a little rogue strawberry just falling out of the side there. There's always one or two that want to get away. <laughs> that looks so good. And keep, it's interesting, you keep wiping the knife after each cut. That's just so it remains nice and as neat as possible because yeah. you can see it's a little bit, a little bit wobbly as a dessert. So yeah, the, the, the more time this gets in the fridge, the better. Yeah. Okay. Oops. And I'm going to put those back on. Oh, I, I can't resist getting involved. There we go. Thank you. It's because I wanted to get some of that custard on my finger. Mm. There we go. Oh, you did a show. <laughs> okay, so that can go back into the. Uh, that well, let's leave that there. Yeah, let's leave that gonna, there. We're going to plate the lamb now. Okay. Um, and um, souffle is. Oh, has that had five minutes? Camera's back. We're looking good. They're moving. Every time, <laughs> souffle anxiety. Okay, right, I'm just going to set the timer again. So for another the, five another minutes. Another five minutes. Because they're actually quite big souffles. Yeah, okay. And Marianne is just giving that souffle a turn. So after five minutes, just give that souffle a. Don't do that a at 180. Home. <laughs> don't, don't touch the souffle with your hand up. Great. Um, excellent. And then we can move on to plating the lamb. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. So the lamb has had a very good rest now. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to, I've got some boiling water. I'm going to blanch the green beans. Okay. Uh, just for a few minutes. And then... Um, and at home, would you say perhaps, I mean, the lamb is great that it's rested, but you, you could just flash the potatoes to get them nice and hot before eating again, do you think? Yes, yes, yeah. I would do. I mean, room temperature is, I'm kind of okay with room temperature as well. Um, and then the jus is going to be very hot. Okay. But yeah, if you want to, I, I would in a restaurant, definitely. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, and we've got the plates. We've got for... some plates, yes. There we go. Okay. Lovely. Okay, so we've got our beautiful lamb. Beautiful. I'm going to cut it this way, whichever way you cut it, the kind of the way that you're going to get the most pieces out, I'd say. Okay. Um, and it's going to be easier to cut because it's a bit shorter. Um, okay, so I'm going to just start at one end. How are we looking? Oh. So that's had, how long's that had? A nice 15, it's 20 minutes? It's had a good 15 minutes of resting and it had 12 minutes in the oven. I think that is absolutely a point. Good. 
and then I would always, Charlie, I don't know if you could, could you help me um, mm. season yes. the face of the lamb, which I always like to do. It's actually such a treat having lovely rump. Like this, Thank you. yeah. Lovely, that's perfect. Just a little okay. bit of salt on top. Lovely. Great. Um, I'm just going, yeah, those green beans. Happy the beans. They didn't take long, do they? It really no, is just no. Quick... I mean, uh, just a few more minutes. Okay, them. so. Oh, wow, so we've got the jus um, there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to mix in the basil now. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Okay, so that's a beautiful flavour, right? So let's assemble the lamb. We've got two and a half minutes left. Two and a half minutes, let's so, get the lamb on. Okay, we've got the. And these plates are two different sizes, so don't worry, it's not. Um, uh, we it's not just an like mixing. Yeah, <laughs> we like mixing it up a little bit. Okay, those beans look. Great. Um, I'm just going to pop them on here. Yeah. So st strain the beans. Okay. And then I like to, I mean, you can plate it however you would like. Uh, um, Lovely. Do. Okay. And then I normally like to, let's just give everyone a nice few pieces each. I think that's a nice shirt. Looking good. Okay, so on top of the beans, like so. Okay, there we go. Ooh. Okay, and then I will just literally put the jus. On okay. top like that. So there's lots going on in this delicious jus. And that's just gonna sort of bring yeah. it all together. We, oui. we oui, chef. We oui, chef, <laughs> yeah. Gosh. Uh, we, yeah, we've been very generous with the jus here, which is always good. I think that'll be nice with some bread dipped in as well. Yes. I'm just going to make sure everyone's got plenty of, so it's the olives, the onion confit, the pine nuts. Marianne, Lovely. that looks so, so good. Good. Gosh, good. and we've got a minute left on the souffle. Excellent. Okay, so... Which gives us just enough time to um, warm up your sauce. What I might do is, um, shall I clear away the chopping boards? We don't, we don't need that again, do we? No, no, we are. And we, we can are. present all this okay. deliciousness under the overhead Lovely. cam. So the bouillabaisse sauce you're putting into the into a saucepan. Yep. So I'm just going to heat warm that, that through. through. Turn everything else off. Have a little tidy up. This is always my favourite part, for the, the, the grand reveal, when everything sort of comes together. But never have we had the anticipation <laughs> of a souffle and mm. the big question, will it rise? <laughs> we are soon to find out. Can't wait. Okay. Souffle dishes at the ready. Okay. And these beautiful little tapenade palmiers. Oh, yes, we oh. have those with a nice glass of rosé, I hope. Yeah, well, I'm going to get these open. I've no doubt everyone at home has probably already wolfed the tapenade palmiers down and um, we're going to do the same. Okay, so ready for the souffles? Let's do it. Let's do it. The moment of truth, folks. Yes, Marianne. Whoa, bravo. Look at that. Those look unbelievable okay so i'm going to just top oh like that you can smell that beautiful oh. base <laughs> wow there we are Oh, oh, out. you're going the wrong way <laughs> keep them there keep them there and we're going to move everything else around well look that is a sensation. Look at those, they have really worked. Nice little bit of bavass in the center. Yeah. Um, Go on, grab a spoon and um, let's, um, let, let, let's tuck in. I'm gonna pour some Provence. Now you told me, how many, how many souffles have you cooked in your life? Um, uh, over 15,000. Over 15,000. Okay, well here's 15,000, <laughs> one and two, and I think these are the best of them all. Oh. Um, and we've got Guillaume's beautiful MIP. Oh, Classic wow. rosé. How lovely. Oh. 
and some uh, taffeta. We haven't spoken about the lovely taffeta. No, well, tell us quickly about those. Oh, so very simply, um, uh, tapenade rolled up in puff pastry, mm. Mm. baked in the oven. Mm. Cheers. Oh, 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 maybe I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Cheers. Marianne, give us a quick recap of this delicious feast that you've created. Mm. So tapenade parmier, courgette souffle with bouillabaisse, uh, rump of lamb with jus antiboise and potato confit to follow tartre pezienne with strawberries. Cheers. Incredible. Congratulations. Let me try. Hold on. Here we go. Look at that. Mm. Look at that. Look at that. It's perfect. Mmm. Incroyable. Oh, fantastique. Delicieuse. It goes on. Marianne, thank you so much. <laughs> what a pleasure. treat. What a treat. Everyone at home, get your souffles at the ready and start popping them in the oven. Um, and I hope that you have the most delicious soiree en Provence. Marianne, thank you so much for joining us. My, pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you, everyone at home, for being here as well. Um, we will be back in two weeks' time for the season finale. Can you believe it? Ryan is back and we're going we're, we're gonna to go off to Japan and end things on a real high before we take a summer break. So please join us then. Get posting your photographs of all this deliciousness and you could be in for a complimentary box to taste Japan on the 17th, 18th of June. So I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you everyone for joining. A big thank you to the Queen of Soufflés, Marianne Lam herself. <laughs> Good night. Thank you.